Hello everyone, this is Justin coming in from Montreal, Quebec. I'm uh, making this quick video on how to use OTR uh, with instant messaging to ensure uh, encrypted conversations. I noticed that there are very few videos out there that quite clearly get you up to speed. Uh, I'm making this video in part because I need to communicate with a friend securely uh, where, we can't where we don't want to trust, say, uh, email, phones, or any sort of traditional chat service like MSN, AIM, uh, or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, so there's this technology called off-the-record messaging. It's known as OTR. Um, it works with a chat protocol communication thing called uh, Jabber or XMMP. Uh, basically what that ensures is that you have uh, an encrypted communication so no one can read your instant messages on the fly. Uh, this is this is assuming that you have an eavesdropper, like say uh, someone wiretapping your phone. Someone is listening in on the uh, bits leaving your computer to your partner's computer. Um, it ensures uh, authentication that the person who you're talking to is in fact the person you think you're talking to. You can have an encrypted communication. Uh, it's possible to have an encrypted communication, uh, but you're having an encrypted communication with someone who you think is your friend Alice, but actually may be Bob trying to covertly uh, pretend to be Alice and uh, uh, getting maybe uh, sensitive information. Thirdly, deniability. This ensures that uh, while you're having the conversation, your, uh, the person you're communicating uh, with can be assured that it is you, but after that conversation is ended, there is no signature and no one can prove that the conversation took place. So uh, that gives you plausible deniability. Uh, and finally, perfect forward secrecy. Uh, if you lose control of your private key, uh, the, the key that's responsible for encrypting uh, the, the message, the communication, it doesn't mean any of the stored conversations, any of the stored encrypted co uh, conversations can be decrypted. Uh, using mathematics and, and technology, they basically derive a special session key, a key that is generated from your private key, uh, and that's unique to each conversation, so only uh, it, it isolates it down, and especially if the master key, your private key, is compromised. So, as far as as far as I'm concerned, as far as uh, many cryptographers and uh, practical uh, people are concerned, this is one of the better technologies to use, better uh, t protocols to use when communicating uh, online. So, first things first, you can't exactly just turn this on on Facebook Messenger or or WhatsApp. You'll have to use uh, XM. MP or Jabber protocol, and that is provided by uh, third-party services for free, um, and you have to download a special client. For Linux and Windows, the program is called Pigeon, and uh, you can download that by going to pigeon.im and downloading it. Windows uh, Windows people can just download uh, through this link here. Ubuntu or any other Linux sort of situation, you can go into the package manager and look for Pigeon and install it there. Uh, you may additionally have to install pigeon-otr as a uh, additional package to enable the plugin, or it might already be distributed uh, as a Pigeon plugin that you can enable after the fact. Windows, you'll you'll actually have to go to the off-the-record messaging uh, page. That's otr.cypherpunks.ca. Click on the download, or sorry, yeah, you can just click the primary download right here, and that will go ahead and, and install the plugin. Uh, after you download and install Pigeon. Finally, if you're on a Mac, you'll have to download a program called Adium or Adium. It is built on the same technology as Pigeon. It's basically the Mac version of Pigeon. It comes default with OTR. <coughs> uh, the OTR plugin downloaded and installed and bundled as a plugin. You can go ahead uh, and just download this program and you're all set to go. Now, I'll show you how to uh, set up for a Mac. Uh, in future videos, I'll make a quick one for Windows and a quick one for Linux, but unfortunately I don't have access to those machines right now, and you'll just have to see me do it for Adium. When you download and install Adium, you will be presented with a very simple program, or a very simple window, or uh, in fact I believe a wizard, and it will ask you to create an account. Uh, what you'll want to do is you want to create an account for XMPP, I realize I've been saying it, XMMP, it's XMPP the whole time. Um, and you'll have to enter in a provider. Now there's one provider that a lot of uh, security sensitive people use and that is
the Jabra service provided by the Chaos Communication Congress in Germany. Uh, now these, sorry, the Chaos Computer Club. These guys are um, security-focused individuals who are uh, big on freedom and freedom of speech. And if you, um, a lot of people trust them for ensuring that they don't snoop in on uh, server connections. They allow you to have a free account, and I'm going to show you how to create one right now. If you go to File, Add Account, XMPP, you'll want to go ahead and just choose a username. Let's go with, say, OTR demo one at jabber.ccc.de. Now, this is the username that you'll use. Uh, you're free to choose anything, such as so as long as it's not already taken. By entering in this part of the address, the at jabber.ccc.de part, it will automatically try and register with their service. And you'll go ahead and click this button here, and it will start that off. Correction, you'll have to type it one more time here at jabber.ccc.de. Request new account. Perhaps I'm mistaken and you have to enter in the password at this point. So go ahead and choose a password that you feel reasonably secure and safe um, using. This is where I'd advise against using a dictionary word like, say, uh, Volvo1 or something like that. You would want to choose a password that is decent to remember but also uh, is long, uh, long in length. So a sentence, for example, is usually a good password so as long as the words are um, you know, using a decent amount of the alphabet. A good example would say be, actually don't use this, but the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. If you do that with spaces and punctuation, proper capitalization, that is a long password and is decently secure. So let's do that. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog with a period. Register a new account. Click request new account. Registration successful. <coughs> So it's now created the account. You're all set to go. Uh, you can configure your chat specific options here. Um, best to leave that on. But alas, let's have a conversation. So I'm going to choose. Right, so when you create the account, you'll get a message from Jabber saying, hey, um, you've connected to the server. Bear in mind that if you don't log in for 12 months, they'll go ahead and remove it to keep it nice and clean and available for anyone. Now, uh, an important option, uh, depending on what you're concerned about, is enabling and disabling uh, logging. Uh, I personally think that if you were going to be having an off-the-record communication chat, you don't want to have them logged on your computer, because um, if, say, both your uh, person you're communicating with and you're communicating with both log and, say, your computer is, for whatever reason, compromised and their computer is compromised, people can see the decrypted logs just sitting there just in plain text. So when you go to the options, that's Adium Preferences, uh, you will want to uncheck this uh, this button and that ensures that there is going to be no logging whatsoever of your covert communications. <coughs> so <coughs> when you have a, a friend who wants to uh, you want to talk with, you'll have them follow the same format and register an account and you can go ahead and um, where is it? Add a contact. You'll uh, ask for their Jabber ID and you'll set it up for your specific contact. In this case, I'm going to have my real account become a friend of, <coughs> of my little demo account here. This part is happening uh, on my real account. Uh, Adium supports multiple accounts simultaneously. It's saying, hey, this person wants to know. Uh, if they can talk to you and know when you're online. And I say yes and add them to my account as well as demo me. This is now uh, my demo account saying like, hey, um, the person you just added, they want to know when you're online as well. So we, here we have the two accounts. Let's have a com secure communication with myself. So coming from my demo account, I'm trying to speak with me. And in order to do that, I go ahead and see this padlock and click Initiate OTR Chat. A prompt will come up, only one, when you're actually talking to a real person and not having two accounts at the same time, saying that 
a person <coughs> who uh, you've never had an encrypted conversation with before wants to have a, an encrypted communication. Their fingerprint is this, and this is yours. Are you willing to accept this fingerprint as verified? Now, this is a very important step. Someone with the account, say, Justin Bull, may not be Justin Bull, and they're pretending to be this person and hoping to communicate with you securely and maybe divulge, uh, have you divulge sensitive information. So it is of the utmost importance that you go ahead and verify a fingerprint on a separate channel. Now, a separate channel can mean anything. That can mean in person, in written letter, over the phone, or in any sort of way that you feel like you can trust the recipient on the other end to be the person you think it is. For example, I try and help other people out by putting my fingerprint on my website, but signing it digitally with a public key. Uh, this is a different uh, encryp encryption and authentication technology that uh, people may be able to put may be able to put pr trust in. And this should so if my site ever gets hacked, they can't just modify that, and the uh, the attacker can't pretend replace my real fingerprint with their fingerprint, and have people talk to what they who they think is me is actually my attacker. <coughs> so you should see that here, my purported fingerprint is supposed to be five five B ninety eight D three A seven four A such and such and such and such, all the way to forty one three six five A two eight. And you'll see here that this fingerprint matches the one here. Good way to do that is copy and search by paste and uh, search the paste. And you can see that these match. So we know that I am me, and I can accept that. And because I know it's me and talking to myself, I can accept that as well. Now we know that it is indeed uh, truly me. And I've said that it is <laughs> me, correct? This will uh, say identity verified the next time we have a conversation. If you look at the uh, about encryption, sorry, that is the correct, incorrect thing. If you look at show details, you'll see that there is a secure session ID for uh, this conversation. Again, the perfect forward secrecy component of the encryption. Uh, this this uh, encrypt this message is, this conversation is encrypted under a key that is not my master key, such that if it's ever compromised, it's isolated down to this one message, or if my master key is compromised, uh, none of my messages are compromised. So now I can have an encrypted communication with myself. Hi me, and you can see that I received a message from me on my other account. So on the left. Uh, is my demo account on the right is my real account speaking with demo me. And, it, and you can reasonably trust this to be a off the record communication. Now, when you're finished your communication, you want the end, end of the conversation. Either one of the parties will want to go into the, um, excuse me, the padlock and click cancel encrypted chat. This ends the session. Therefore, book ending the conversation and the encryption. So when you have a, want to have another communication or another conversation, it's created under a new session key. That's an important part that I think a lot of people forget because maybe they keep these windows open um, and <clears throat> just hibernate their computer a lot and these things can re remain open in clear text. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel the encrypted chat and it's going to say ended OTR encrypted chat. And then it will the other end, the other party will be informed that the person's turned off encryption on their end, and then I should do the same. Voila, you are now talking in plain text. That is how you have a secure, uh, secure communication, and uh, hope that helps. <clears throat> One consideration that you may want to uh, think about that this does not secure the um, does not secure. Uh, both computers. So if, if one of the computers is compromised, uh, this will not protect you against that threat model. This is against people who are concerned about eavesdropping or wiretapping or of that similar uh, ilk. Or, better yet, uh, concerned about the person, uh, they want to know the person who they're talking to is in fact that person. <laughs> a good way to do this, uh, especially if you can't get a secure channel, is that when you encrypt when you initiate the encryption, 
you can ask the person a personal question that only one of you would know, like saying, where, <coughs> what did I pass you? What did I lend to you that one time we met? You want to avoid something very uh, generic, like when was the first time we met, or what year, what's the name of my dog, because anyone, and especially a clever attacker, can try and research that information and get back to you. So it's something, a shared secret that you think only your friend would ever know, or the person you're communicating, communicating with would only ever know. Again, uh, future videos will include, or future videos will cover Windows and uh, Linux. But right now, this is how you do it for Macintosh.